Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the MAX1811 uh, lithium ion lithium polymer battery charger. Uh, this is a, a little tiny MSOP 8 chip, it's one that you can solder yourself at home, it's not too difficult. Uh, this is what it looks like here, I've got it on a little breakout board so that it breaks out to normal pins, uh, 0.1 inch pitch pins that I can stick into a breadboard so that I can test it out, but it will be going on a PCB eventually. Uh, it's quite an easy little chip to use, it doesn't require many components, just a couple of caps and resistor I think. Uh, I'll show you the, the circuit that I'm using. Uh, and it can charge batteries to 4.1 or 4.2 uh, volts and uh, it only works with single cell uh, lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries and it will take anything up to 6.5 volts in and it will burn off the rest of the, the, uh, the power it doesn't need. Uh, it can charge at 100 milliamps or 500 milliamps, and that's selectable. I'm just using 100 milliamps because the, the solar power that I can get in the UK from my little PV panels, I can guarantee it's going to be 100 milliamps more of the time than I can guarantee I could get 500 milliamps. But it does mean that the charge time is longer. Now let's have a look at the circuit. Right, so here's, here's the circuit that I'm using for the MAX1811. It's roughly similar to what's in the data sheet. Uh, it's just a different different format, so I'm selecting different options than the data sheet gives you the example circuit for. So you've got the, the solar panel up here, I'm using two but I've only drawn one, uh, and that comes down to uh, in on uh, the MAX1811. I haven't actually drawn pin numbers on here, but as you'll be aware it goes down and goes across like that. So uh, there's a couple of things you need to take notice of. Um, that's the select I, so that's select current, so it's like VIR symbol things. Uh, so select current, that's going to ground, and that's selecting 100 milliamps. Uh, but if you were to put it to, to in here, voltage coming in, then it would select it at 500 milliamps. Again, there's another select here, so select voltage. Uh, if you put that to in, you select 4.2 volts, and if you put it to ground or low, then um, you select 4.1. I'm selecting 4.2 because I want to get the most out of my batteries. Uh, it has a charge indicator, a little LED up here, that's connected to it. So when, when it's got current going through and the current's enough to mean that the chip's operating, then the charge indicator LED will light up. And similarly, when the, the battery's fully charged, that charge indicator will go off. Uh, and then you've got out here, which goes straight to your battery. And so it's sharing the same ground as the solar panel, but it's taking the, the positive terminal from there. Um, down here, I've got a diode in here, uh, but actually I've replaced that with a P-channel MOSFET in reverse bias. So uh, it's, uh, it's acting as a diode, but using less of a voltage drop. In fact, I think the voltage drop is an enormous amount less. I think like the, the resistance is really something like 0.0028 ohms or something like that. So uh, there's a huge difference between having a diode and using a P-channel MOSFET in solar applications. You might want, not want to do that all the time, but certainly when it comes to solar, you want to drop as little voltage as possible. Uh, and that's basically it. It's a really, really easy chip to use. As you can see, it's quite small, so uh, you do need to be careful when soldering, but it's easy enough to do. So I'll show you what it looks like on the breadboard at the moment. It's not very pretty though. So I've got it on a breadboard here, the MAX1811. It's on one of these little breakout uh, boards that I told you about. Uh, it's, they're really simple. To solder the chip to that and then you can solder some, some header pins on there and plug it straight in. Again, I'm still using the, uh, the diode in here. I haven't changed that out for a P-channel MOSFET yet, but I will. Uh, and we've got three solar panels here. They're one watt solar panels, apparently. They don't produce as much as I expect, but uh, they're arranged in parallel. So we're tripling the, uh, the current and keeping the voltage the same. So that was a very quick sort of introduction to what the MAX1811 can do and how you can shove it in a circuit really, really quickly and select the options that you want. So like 4.1 volts or 4.2 or a charging voltage, charging current of 100 milliamps or 500 milliamps, depending on what your application can provide. So they're really cheap as well, they're like two quid, so they're worth getting hold of. You could do it, they're, they're mainly uh, sort of designed for USB, so if you were to plug it into a USB, you can get 500 milliamps or 100 milliamps or whatever you want, and it's really easy to design a, uh, 
a lithium ion or lithium polymer charger that way. But I'm using it with solar, so uh, it's similar voltage, it won't matter. All right, thanks for watching. Goodbye.